All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, Senate Republicans released an explosive report yesterday detailing Hunter Biden's many business dealings with oligarchs around the world, including many lucrative multi-million dollar deals that he pursued while Joe Biden was sitting vice president of the United States. Now, if you didn't hear about it, I don't blame you. After all, there was a lot in the news yesterday from the Breonna Taylor announcement, SCOTUS developments, and of course, we are less than 40 days to go until the presidential election. But before I tell you some of the pretty lurid details of what's in this report, let's start with my favorite part. That is how the mainstream media covered it. They barely had time to glance before they even came to their conclusion. Nothing to see here, folks. Politico's headline, Blair, GOP senators anti-Biden report repackages old claims. New York Times writes, Republican inquiry finds no evidence of wrongdoing by Biden. The Daily Beast wrote, Senate Republicans release Hunter Biden hatchet job weeks from Election Day. And BuzzFeed, Republicans, Hunter Biden report is filled with old, unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated allegations and debunked theories. Jeez, it's like a memo went out or something. Reading those headlines, there must be really nothing in there, huh? Yeah, wrong. The report, while admittedly partisan in nature, is filled with raw facts, which are stunning to behold from the son of the second most powerful person in the United States at the time, and especially problematic when that person wants to become the commander in chief. Here are a few things that the Times and Politico and BuzzFeed and the Daily Beast don't want you to know. The report finds that Hunter Biden's seat on a Ukrainian energy company's board was, quote, very awkward for all U.S. officials pushing an anti-corruption agenda in Ukraine. That's just on the Ukraine piece. The report also finds, quote, Hunter Biden, his family and his business partner, Devin Archer, received millions of dollars from foreign nationals with questionable backgrounds. Among those payments includes three and a half million dollar wire transfer from Yelena Bautrina, I hope I said that right, the richest woman in all of Russia, and conveniently, the wife of the former mayor of Moscow, or business associations with individuals who, according to the report, are linked to the Chinese Communist Party, and even the People's Liberation Army of China. And the report says, quote, those associations resulted in millions of dollars in cash flow. Last but not least, Hunter, pay, quote, paid non-resident women who were nationals of Russia or other Eastern European countries who appear to be linked to an Eastern European prostitution or human trafficking ring. Very classy stuff. Now, you may say that this has nothing to do with Joe Biden, but I would beg to differ. Corruption in the 21st century very, very rarely entails somebody handing somebody else a briefcase full of cash and then that person going out and doing their bidding. It's gotten much more sophisticated. The way corruption works in America, pretty much anywhere else outside of the third world, is by enriching family members, spreading moneyed payments out through a network of stocks and trusts and accounts and business interests and ownership structures and more. The whole point is to make it so complicated that deciphering it is nearly impossible. And thus, the public never knows how sold out you really are and every single thing about this stinks to high heaven. Now look, I am not alleging Joe Biden pursued a certain policy agenda because of one of those payments. But that's not how this works. Let's say the Chinese take Hunter out for a grand old time and they give him a billion dollar loan for his business and more, which happened. And then they send him back to the United States to hang out with his dad. You think his son isn't going to tell his dad just how great China is for him or push him one way or the other on policy? Hunter is literally the type of person that Chinese tariffs or export controls would impact. If it played even 1% impact in Biden's conversations with Chinese leader Xi Jinping, then it's a scandal. Think back to ancient times during the 2016 presidential election, when WikiLeaks emails revealed that the King of Morocco donated $12 million to the Clinton Foundation in order to secure a meeting with Hillary Clinton in 2015. Why? Not because he believed strongly with the charitable mission of the Clinton Foundation, but because he knew Hillary had a decent chance of becoming president of the United States and he wanted to meet her. That's a snapshot of corruption in its much more sophisticated form, and it reeks in this case against Hunter. We're talking here about millions of dollars in payments from the richest woman in Russia with ties to Putin, Chinese Communist Party officials, sketchy oligarchs in Ukraine, sketchy oligarchs in Kazakhstan, John Kerry's uber-rich stepson, bank transfers with Joe Biden's brother. It's just endless muck. And here's the craziest part. None of it may be illegal. Though I strongly, strongly suspect some of it might be, even with our very weak and inadequate corruption laws. 
You might say, yeah, but the Trump kids have engaged in some sketchy stuff too. And you know what? You're right. It is a problem. I actually legitimately am glad that the New York Times and Politico and lawmakers and others have invested significant amounts of money investigating those business ties. Why? Because America deserves to know if their highest officials can be bought. And the problem I have in this case is that the standard is thrown out the window for old Joe Biden. Where are the Pulitzer Prize winning reporters who claim to track every single thing that a Trump property will do? Where is the Showtime show and the $1 million investigation from the New York Times like they did for an old tax return of Trump from like 20 years ago? Where is the MSNBC segments? Where are the CNN live factor? Fi fact checkers? Where are the journalists asking Joe Biden if he still wants to claim this with a straight face? You were the vice president running point on Ukraine. The average Joe hears that and says, that sounds fishy. What's your understanding of what your son was doing for an extraordinary amount of money? I don't know what he was doing. I know he was on the board. I found out he was on the board after he was on the board. And that was it. Nobody reading this report, seeing how deeply enmeshed the entire Biden family was in the business dealings, can realistically think Biden didn't at least have a pretty good idea of what was going on with his son. And America needs to know if this pattern of allowing corruption within your own closest family members while serving as commander in chief will continue. Notice, I keep using the word deserve because I have no illusions that the American people won't get an answer as long as our corporate media continues to cover him for him. It's pretty incredible, Crystal. I mean, some of the things in here, we're talking about like Hunter opened a joint bank account with a Chinese oligarch for a hundred grand, and then him and his uncle, Biden's brother, would withdrew a hunt. They used that cash to buy Apple devices and plane tickets. Pretty good gig if you can get it. You wow. Know, it's the day honest work. Well, just just yeah, the just connection, like, just the Putin connection alone. Can you imagine what oh, the media would do with that? If the yeah. shoe was on. Oleg the, Deripaska. Was you on, that guy? Yeah, how was many, on how the many other stories have you people read about Oleg Deripaska? And here's yeah. the thing. Like, uh, first of all, a couple things. Number one, Joe Biden is explicitly running on like restore the soul of the nation. He's running on his morals and his values. So it seems like that is an area that is worthy of, of scrutiny to see whether he is living up to the ideals that he claims to represent. Um, number two, you know, mainstream reporters used to actually look into this stuff yes. with him. It's only since he's become like, a, you know, the Democratic nominee, even when he was a front runner, suddenly all of that reporting sort of stopped and fell by the wayside. But a lot of the original reporting on this was done by The New York Times, was done by That's right. mainstream, 2015. mainstream yeah. outlets. And part of the problem here is oftentimes the worst part of our system are the things that you can actually get away with. So like you said, look, this stuff may all be legal. And it's common practice in this town. Everybody just gets used to this idea that, like, yeah, it's totally fine for you and your friends and your family members to basically cash in on your, quote, unquote, public service position. Like, that's a disgusting notion. is deeply destructive and corrosive to public trust in the institutions here. So it is incredibly worthwhile. And, look, you're absolutely, like, the GOP is completely partisan on yeah. this. Like, they have an extra guy. They don't care when it's Trump. Obviously, no. they're completely blind to all of this. But then you could just dismiss it, as Democrats have done the whole time along, is like, yeah, people sit on boards, they make money, mm -hmm. nothing to see here whatsoever. Well, I think people would be deeply disgusted by some of this behavior. If you dismiss it, you don't have a leg to stand on. I don't want to hear about Jared Kushner's brother getting specialty visas from China, which I do, by the way, <laughs> think is a legit story and outrageous. And that's the difference, which is that you cannot have a leg to stand on to talk about corruption if you're not willing to talk about corruption within your own ranks. And this is dirty. It just is. I mean, millions Millions of dollars, the richest woman in Russia, right? Like, you could write the headlines yourself. If Don Jr. had a, mi or a three and a half million dollar wire transfer from the richest woman in oh, Russia, forget about would it. the New York Times headline be? <laughs> Report Nothing finds no here. wrongdoing from Donald Trump. No, I Something mean just tells no. Me no. The Don Jr. meeting with that woman in the Trump Tower. I mean, good. I you can re, you can go read minute by minute transcripts of everybody involved. How many millions of dollars of American people's reporting resources, taxpayer dollars, have gone into investigating that meeting? Which I think is fine. Again, fine. Just do it whenever it comes Just to this. Just apply it equally. I completely am fine. I want our public officials to be afraid that they and their family members are going to be rooted out. Their corruption. That's a good thing. Like, yeah, James Biden, uh, Joe's brother, 
seems like a pretty sketchy dude. And he might just become the ne the brother of the president of the United States. He has dined out on his bro brother's name for a long time. So is his son. Is that going to continue? I think that's outrageous. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the Trump kids did it because I think it's outrageous if they do it too. We should, we should have much stronger corruption laws, but it actually is hard to write legislation like to deal with this effectively, which means that the only check on it is the fear that you're going to be basically like named and shamed by the yes. press. And so when you know you can operate with impunity and that's not really a threat to you, then yeah, they just go out and, and do it and everybody does. And there's become this expectation in this town that it is acceptable, just, perfectly fine, appropriate to cash in on your position. Like the, like you somehow yeah. deserve that. Like you've earned that by being a quote unquote public servant. And I think that entire mentality is disgusting. It really is. Coming up on Rising, clock has run out on President Trump's $300 addition to unemployment benefits. Economics reporter in front of the show, Jeffrey Stein, is going to tell us what that means for the people of this country when Rising returns.